Hello, everyone. Thank you for this um, opportunity to be here to present the use case that we have with NSO in Brazil. We are, talk we are going to talk about uh, how you use NSO to remediate network configuration uh, using configuration compliance uh, use case. Today, Today, we are going to talk about what motivates this uh, use case, what is the story behind the use case, and why the customer decided to um, ask for automation, how we shape the use case, how we construct or how you build the, the user stories to, 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 to get the requirements from the customer and to shape this to the development phase. And at the end, uh, what we did at NSO in terms of development and how it's built and uh, it's being used right now. So what is the motivation behind the use case? First of all, what we saw, uh, there was a huge outage in the whole country in Brazil some years ago, a few years ago, and this internet outage impacted the whole country. And after a customer asked us to, to troubleshooting and see what causes this uh, huge outage, we realized, we found that uh, the root cause was a misconfiguration in some of their devices in their network. The CTO asked us to uh, help help them in how or the ways that we can identify or improve visibility and prevent those outages in the network in the future. So how how can we um, help them to identify and have more visibility about the configurations and the devices? and to prevent or to avoid those outages in the future. That starts with a um, question very important. They, they had to, too many um, configurations and devices in their network uh, that they don't, that they doesn't, they don't have visibility about how they are being configured. And actually, um, if they are, in compliance or not with the, the standards that they deserve or they, they want to, to have in the, in the network. So we started talking about the automation. We started talking about how they are using their tools. In this case, they already have NSO in, in place and other tools as well. Uh, but we need to find out a way to use those um, as an opportunity to create a new use case to, to meet those requirements from the customer. Our team, developers and um, software architects and also network engineers, uh, try to, to work together to find a way to define the automation and use case and then helping the customer to prevent those outages in the all in all network. But there is a challenge there. What's the challenge? Actually, the customer has an operation team that um, run multiple actions in the, in the network, which includes troubleshooting, updates, templates, configuration templates, some of um, security attacks or bugs that need to be fixed, and new projects and also software upgrades in their devices. All those um, tasks are running in parallel with multiple teams acting together or as isolated. Uh, they don't know uh, one team what they are doing and the other team what they are doing. So because of this uh, component and adding the multi-vendor network with a hundred of devices, it's a challenge to bring those two pieces together and because of a high complexity 
to identify the problem or the out of compliance devices in the network. So the customer need in this case, the customer need a solution to identify in an easy, easy way to identify those uh, devices that are out of compliance. That was the challenge. How we uh, approach this challenge. So we decided to first sell, define the, the, the use case and um, try to get the, um, the mangoes and benefits from that. So we try to get the idea of what are the network templates of configurations and find in, in, in those templates, find out what are the out of compliance configurations in the network. So that's the main goal. The second main goal is we need to automate the remediation. If they, if they need to do effects in the network, this fix should be easy to implement, not difficult, and also automated, which means no manual um, intervention in the devices. And the, the other or the third goal was present the findings in executive summary report because um, the customer, the operations team, for example, they need to have the details of the configuration, what they, what they want to, to change or they need to change, but also they need to have a summary executive report to present to the leaders, to the executives, and they, and they can have the, uh, um, a whole visibility about the network. Remember, those are a multi-vendor network with hundreds of devices. So we are talking about not only Cisco devices, but also other vendors like Juniper, Huawei, Nokia. What was the approach? We identified some configurations, some templates, and then we decided to check about configuration compliance in pieces. What does it mean? We are, we are going to analyze or to identify categories of the, the configuration and then each category related to which part of the compliance um, configuration that we want to check. So let's see, let's, let's say we have, for example, um, configuration like MPLS. So it's related to uh, troubleshooting, it's related to performance, it's related to uh, protocols, routing protocols, so traffic paths, etc. So we decided to split the configuration in pieces, uh, we call cate categories, and then uh, starting to check the configurations in those categories. categories. And this is important because as we have different teams to operate the network, and the engineer team that define the templates, the configuration, the total effort spent to identify those out of compliance configurations manually uh, impacts the operational costs and the time to resolution. So the biggest benefits of adopting the automation in this case is to cost savings, time to identify issues, and also to provide a better customer experience. The end customer, the end user's experience will also be impacted if the issue is not solved faster. So the idea is to automate the resolution or the remediation to get or to provide a better user, end user experience. So those are the benefits, and that's the approach that we uh, built. With that, we, we ended up with a process. So with the mangoes, with the benefits, trying to get automation together, we uh, develop a, a compliance process that we, of course, presented to the customer and get their agreement about this process because this process involves our part, but also their part. So the compliance process is as follows. The first step, establish compliance standards, which means identify and set up relevant compliance standards based on industry best practices. 
regulatory requirements, and of course, organizational policies. So customer needs to, should provide to us the configuration templates updated according to their policies, according to their um, best practices, and also provide some network inventory if possible in this step one. The step two is related to network discovery, uh, which means we need to use automated tools to identify all network devices, their configurations. We need to map the network infrastructure, network inventory. The templates and the devices in this uh, step should be added into NSO. So we have devices, we have templates, we have all um, configuration in one place, which is in a soap. And then we are going to do the third step. The third step is related to configuration analysis, which means uh, we need to compare the current network configuration with the established compliance standards, the templates. Then we need to identify any discrepancies or non compliant devices and say, this device is not compliant in this category because of this difference, because we found some difference there. And in this phase, we are going to provide a final report that is created like an executive summary, report, and the compliance details of all configurations that were audited. So operations team can have the details of the configuration that need to be fixed. But also the executives can see the final report saying um, they have, for example, 10% or 20% of the network is out of compliance, right? Okay, so we are going to move to the fourth step uh, that's related to remediation. So customer decides in this, in this step, in this phase, uh, how to address the non-compliant configurations by correcting them manually or through automated process. This is customer decision in this case. We are going to see more details about that. Uh, we need to provide then uh, an easy way to reconfigure or to patch the devices if necessary. And customer can choose which devices they need or they want to start the remediation. So it's very important to have this flexibility in this case, in this step. And the final step, step five, we are talking about regular auditing and reporting, which means conduct regular audits to ensure continued compliance. So customer needs to run these uh, a monthly basis, a weekly basis, uh, whatever they want, but they need to do this regularly. And every time that they run this compliance, they need to be able to generate or to get an, a new or a newer reviewed or updated report detailing the network configuration status and any compliance issues that were get in, uh, in, in that uh, situation that time. So in this case, network configurations we can guarantee that they are compliance. This step or this process is cyclical. That's mean, that means that we are talking about every time that we run, we run a report, the customer will be able to get new information about the network, even though we, you have a new device in the network, and then he can start the process again. Establish new templates, establish new uh, standards, compliance, configurations. Maybe they have a new security issue that they need to address. If they need to add a new command in, the, in their devices. So this process can be uh, automated and also can, uh, can help them to ensure the network is in compliance with new uh, commands or new um, best practices, but also to do the remediation if necessary. Okay, this is the process. This is the idea behind the use case. This is the, this is the why they, they ask us to help them to automate uh, because of the huge outage they, they had in the past. But now we are going to talk a little more about this process and how you shape the use case to the development phase. 
So shaping the use case, we adapt the agile methodology to do that. So we, we start building a backlog of stories, user stories, to create the, the case for the development. The first story or the first user story or customer story was related to customer wants to identify and remediate the out of compliance device from their own portal. They have a portal, they have some, some place where they, they can see um, the devices related to the, to the network or into their backbone. They need to select the devices. I visualize the configuration right now uh, at, the, at the moment that they are selecting the devices, get the, the actual configuration and check if the configuration is okay or not okay and then decide. I'm going to approve, I'm going to apply this remediation or not. So customer want to have this visibility. This was the first story. How we approach this story. So with the portal that we mentioned, customer can uh, select the device and the device, uh, the configuration for that device will be uh, shown in the portal so they can see the, the difference, if they have some of out of compliance configuration where they can apply or if they want to apply or not, they have two options. Complete, okay, I will not apply any configuration or resync, which means resync this configuration that I'm seeing right now in the portal with the device. And then the device will be uh, resynced with new configuration or new template or updated template and the device will be in compliance, right? So one is NSO should apply this fix or should apply the configuration to fix the, the device that is out of compliance, or you can select resync to apply the fix right away in multiple selected devices. I mean, um, the customer had the option to copy and paste if they want. Just copy this configuration, which is the remediation, the fix, and then paste in the device. But they also have the option to automate these using the resync option. The second story is related to customer asking us to receive a monthly mail, include the monthly report and the details of the out of compliance findings. And then their operations team will decide whether to use an SO for remediation or apply the templates directly from the device CLI. It's the copy and paste that I mentioned. Customer want to decide by themselves if they want to do this automatically or if they need to do some of a manual operation because of some concerns or it's a critical device in the network so they need to monitor so they don't want a, 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 a system to to touch the device but they need someone to do that uh, manually so this is the customer decision and we 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 get this in 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 a way to be flexible with that right and of course the the last thing that they ask is, I want to measure the compliance evolution of my network. What that means, they need to see if every month they are doing good, they are applying the fixes, they are making sure that the devices are in compliance what, with the, the templates or with the new uh, best practices or any new commands that they need to put in the network. So how we uh, approach this uh, second customer story. We created a summary report based on the devices, P1, P2, or whatever P, uh, whatever device that has some of out of compliance configuration. And then we uh, categorize those configurations. If it's a high availability configuration, if it's logging destinations, access lists, or line template access. 
So we have the category of the configuration and then the devices that have um, out of compliance configuration on those categories. And we will also provide uh, a configuration file or a recommendation config file per device. So if customer wants, he just need to open this file that is provided like this example, p 2 out of compliance oooconf which has the configuration that is missing in the device. So we found some configuration missing in this device, which was access list in the case, um, a destination or a host that was missing there. So we provide the difference and we provide the the config file, so they are able to see what is the configuration, and in this case, copy and paste if they want, right? This is not the real case, this is just an example, but this is what is happening in the customer network right now. All right, so what were the results, or what can we learn, or how we are doing this? Actually, adopting the Agile methodology, we are talking about the, the, um, all the teams that work in the customer, engineer team, operations teams, and all teams together, they are doing a, a, a very good job together because they are getting this information from the use case. Uh, we got customer transformation in this case because applying the Agile methodology the operation that uh, was isolated in the past, now it's like a synergy. So all the teams working together, they can see the remediation that was applied in the network, they can see out of compliance report, and they can um, take some actions or decisions. Operation teams can apply the configuration to fix an issue, but engineer team can also prioritize out of compliance findings and add new commands to the network or to prevent some security issues. So, and all the teams, including the executive leadership team, um, they have visibility about the network and about the evolution of compliance. So with that, we had a good approach and we applied this giant methodology and got customer transformation bringing them together to work as an, uh, uh, not a isolated groups, but as a whole team. And um, they are, they are, I mean, they are very happy with that. And of course we are too, because automation brings to them the, the option to transform their operations. Now we are going to talk about the development at NSO which was a very interesting uh, part. And for that, I will hand over to Victor. Okay, thank you, Vandro. You can pass the slides, please. So now we'll provide more details about the development that we have done in NSO. You can go ahead. After receiving the requirements that the customer stories that Bando has explained, we have mapped them to technical requirements. The first main requirement is to run the audit into a different group of device. In our case, we have P Cisco iOS XR, P Cisco iOS uh, routers, P Cisco iOS XR, and others. Uh, we need also to aggregate all the results of this out of compliance uh, audit in a single place. And after that, consolidate the results per configuration area in, to build the, the compliance report. And about actions, we need to notify customer by mail and we need to automatically remediate the, the routers with out of configurations, okay? And how we'll build this solution? We have built two main uh, NSO packages. 
to separate the tasks. The first one we have called NSO Configuration Compliance Package. And the main role of this package is to generate the list of uh, power of compliance configurations per device. Okay. This list will feed the second package, which we have called executive summary. It will receive all these out of these files, process them, and consolidate the findings in the compliance report. Okay. This NSO executive summary package also will be responsible to send the monthly emails to, to the customer. Now let's start uh, explaining the first package, the configuration compliance. One thing that's very, very important when we explain this package is that we use the XML files to, to identify the out of compliance configurations. Uh, here we have a, a simple example, an access list with three rows to permit the host 111, 222, 333. Okay. In this example, we have a router that's already that's configured with out of configuration for this access list. It's configured with uh, the to allow the host 222, 333, and 444. Okay. And we explain about uh, about the, the importance of the tags in an SO. Here is that we have a tags of replace XML files. The result when we use this tag replace is that this, of this area of configuration, the access list, must be identical of what is in the template. What means in the example, it will add the line that's missing, which is the 111, and remove the extra line that was incorrectly configured, the 444. Another example of these tags is the default tag of the XML uh, configuration file is merge. Merge will not be, the, the intention of this tag is not to be exactly identical is to guarantee that the lines that we have included in the, in the template, in this, in this case, 111, 222, and 333, are included in the configuration. So the result of this uh, example will be that the NSO will say that to the configuration be compliant, it, it needs just to add one line, the host 111, okay? You can go ahead. Okay. And these tags may, as you have seen, makes the, the configuration compliance work much easier. Okay. We, there are some tags as they replace that we have provided example of for the access leads that are better to be used for this. Uh, also, there are other areas where replace is better as QoS, SNMP, which all the routers should have exactly the same configuration for this area. But there are other areas that, will, that are included in the template that have unique configurations. For example, uh, an IGP, an OSPF, uh, each router will have, for example, the, the configuration of which, which are my neighbors, OSPF, and the interface are different from one router for the other. So in this case, we should use another, the merge tag, which will guarantee that, okay, the mandatory configurations are there, but we will not be removing any configuration, any specific configuration for, for this area, okay? And there is a third uh, tag that we, we have used a lot. It's the delete tag. With the delete tag, we guarantee that a configuration that must not be in the router will not be there. Okay, if it's configured, then SO will say, okay, it's out of compliance because you need to remove this configuration. And finally, in, for the config compliance package, what were the 
the other two requirements is to provide the configurations that should be applied by the NSO. But to generate these configurations, we use the service check sync, which is a native NSO service. Okay, and this is illustrated in this in this picture. Here we say that that okay, for your router to be compliant, you need to add this access list global call signaling. You need to and and to add this access list global SSH. Okay, and to remediate the the out out of compliance device, we use another. And a so native feature, which, which is redeploy. Okay, so we can select the device and apply a redeploy, and the device will be apply uh, compliance again. Okay, we have provided the overview of the first package, the configuration uh, compliance. Now we'll talk about the second package, the executive summary. The first thing is that we will receive, as you can see in the left of the slide, the configuration with the out of compliance configurations for each device, in this case, PE1 and PE2. As you can see that the, the outputs are different from each device. We have one main, main file, which is this one, the ROSE JSON file. These, uh, as the name suggests, it is used to classify into a configuration area as OSPF, access list, login, SMP, and others, each uh, configuration out of compliance that we found. Okay. This rows.json file has three main fields. The first one is the template. The template is mapped in the, is the name of the area that we are auditing. Okay, and it's being used in the compliance report in the configuration column. Okay, in this case, we have, in this example, we have three templates. One is OSPF and SR, the second one is the ACL, ACL123, and the third one is the login template. The second uh, main field from the rows.json file is the comment. The comment is like a description that's uh, mapped in the compliance report in the second column. In this case, we have NSR not configured, AS ACL 123 not compliant, and logging template exceptions. Okay. And now the most important part that are the constraints. Okay, inside inside the constraint, we have two fields, the parent and the child. The parent and, and we use these fields as a hierarchy. Okay, let's go to the first example. The first example we are saying to the NSO that he should look for the common line NSR, but then but this common line must be inside the router OSPF one. Okay, as we see in the in both configurations, this out of configure out of compliance configuration is just found in the PE1. Okay. This is the reason that PE1 is listed in the third column device and the count that counts the total num number of device with just with this exception is one. Okay. The second example is the is for the ACL one, two, three. The parent is new, is empty. And the child is IPv4 access list ACL one two three. So NSO will look for any configure any uh, device that has this power of compliance IPv4 access list ACL one two three. In our case, he will file on both device P one and P two, and the count will be two. Okay. The third example, the login template. We also have a parent new, but we have uh, uh, several childs. In this case, six ch different childs. And what the NSO will do, it will look for any of these child. So the login buffer information and log source interface loopback, loopback zero is a part of this list and it's present in PE1. 
So as we have found one of them or two of them in the out of configuration file, we will include this device. This is the reason that both devices were included for this configuration area and the count is two. Okay, so it's very important that this rows JSON is the file that our engineer and operations team will use to define each area that should appear in the in the final report. And in this, uh, we have used a very uh, helpful library, Python lab library to run this uh, processing in the configuration files. It's this one, Cisco Conf Parse. Okay. There are also other uh, libraries as Cisco Conf Parse for other uh, vendors as Juniper Config Parser for Juniper device, TTP SROS Parser for Nokia. And the main goal of this library is to help us with these complex care queries about the parent and child uh, uh, relationships. As you can see in the in this uh, in, in the script here, what we have done, we have received, uh, we have a function that's called compliance that have re that has received the native configuration from the device, the rows that are in the rows.json file and the device. And what we do, first thing, with the help of the library, we parse the configuration. Okay, so we we parse the native configuration for our hierarchical configuration. The second thing is we go to a loop, row by row, constraint by constraint, and using this library, we see, we have this find result. Uh, we look if the we we send uh, the parent and the child for this function find objects child and find children and the library will return to us empty if the if this pair or or the child is not present in the configuration or it will return the the configuration okay so if it's empty we we know that uh, the the router doesn't have this out of compliance configuration if it's not empty what we do we add the device in the compliance report that are the the last three uh, lines in the script. Okay. Last the the last uh, part of this package, the executive summary package, is to send the email. So we have created also a young that uh, young file that will have the default values, okay? But customer, and, and this, uh, and, but customer can also run the, this part, this package in the CLI, okay? So for example, here we have the service executive summary compliance report, send email true, and we can also include other variables, for example, other destinations to receive the report, it can be done manually anytime in NSO. But our requirement, our main requirement is that we have to send uh, on the first day of each month a report as we are showing there. A configuration compliance report that will include a zip file. And this, in this zip file, you see the compliance report with the category, with the device that are uh, not compliance with for each category and the number of device. And also we'll have the list of all the configuration files uh, with the information of what should be done to, to make this each device compliance again. Okay. All, all of these formations include in this zip file. Then this is the both packages that we have developed, okay, and guaranteeing that customer will have the complete visibility of uh, the each device 
out of configuration and uh, executive, executive summary view to have the to prioritize which uh, out of configuration he wants to to fix and also to provide a visibility for all the teams of how his network is uh, compliant. So if you have uh, any question, or if you want to run a POV, it's just please contact us. Uh, now, here you have our emails also from Luciano, that's from our team that has helped a lot in this development. Okay, and we'll be uh, in, in touch with you. Okay. All right, thank you, Victor. Um... We are open for, for Q and A right now, but feel free to uh, reach out to us at any time. Uh, we just want to close this presentation saying uh, that automation is like a staircase, so each project builds up on the ones before it to increase the scope and capabilities of the whole over time. So don't give up if you are in the first step you should just do one more step at the time to get there thank you everybody thank you